wrecked Mustang certainly isn't an uncommon sight here at the shop. This Mustang, though, isn't just some ordinary Mustang. RTR owner Vaughn Gittin Jr. worked with Ford to design a special package for these Mustangs, which includes wheels, suspension, trunk valence, and a signed dash plaque just to point a few things out. Oh yeah, and this one happens to be supercharged. The damage on this car isn't that bad, and I'm sure you're gonna let us have it down in the comments section, but this car, it's just a parts car for us. This motor is destined for bigger and better things, and well, it's already paid for, which pretty much covered the cost of the car for us. That is assuming though that it passes all the tests. I did find out the hard way when bringing this thing inside that because of these rear diffuser add-ons, this car is a little bit bigger dimensionally. And well, this mount did not survive. So I went ahead and took the other one off, but that is kind of unfortunate because unless there's a way for us to salvage this, that's gonna cost us a little bit of money on this rear bumper diffuser combo. This is a salvage story after all, where we show you the dollars and cents behind a salvage auction vehicle like this and what goes into the operation to keep the wheels turning at a place like this. Back up front at the motor though, with that fender out of the way, we get a much better image of how deep the damage goes because the first test that this motor has to pass is a visual test. We need to make sure that it is safe to fire it up so that we can hear it run. And I'm seeing some frame rail damage here, maybe a little bit of subframe damage down there. There's definitely some things moved around. Unfortunately, it looks like that front strut might be damaged. But the important thing is that I don't don't see anything here that's going to keep this car from running. Now, a casualty of this accident, this would be the reservoir for the supercharger and I would assume what the pump mounts to. I did go ahead and do some quick line rerouting so that way we could put some fluid into this system. Essentially what we've done is bypass the heat exchanger at the front, but we do have some fresh cold fluid in the system and it is sealed up. So we're not gonna leave this thing running for too, too long, but I do wanna hear it run before we go ahead and get this thing into pieces. We're gonna wait for this thing to warm up, but initially it sounds absolutely fantastic, which is the second test that it needs to pass. You have just a little bit of whistle from the supercharger, which sounds awesome, but the actual motor itself is extremely quiet. Sometimes these Gen 3s have what they call the uh, typewriter tick or the barbecue tick, I believe it's called. And that just is the direct injection being a little bit loud on these motors. But this one sounds absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I have to say this is one of the best sounding cars that's come through the shop maybe like top five ever not even just mustangs i love the way that this thing sounds i am a little bit sad that this one is going to be coming apart for part i'm going to feel a little bit bad about it down the road but as you guys know by now that's what keeps the lights on in the building
these Mustangs are pretty easy teardowns and we are most of the way home. This drive line looks just as beautiful outside of the car as it did inside. Pretty much as close to new as we can get because this car only had right about 9,000 some odd miles. I do have concerns though. We're all set up for the most important part of the teardown or leak down test. And with the plugs removed, you can see this thing was running pretty rich actually. This driver side cat looks pretty good, but the passenger side, oh my goodness, the thing is completely melted away. Judging by the way the plugs look, I can say that this thing was probably running pretty rich. There was a fair amount of unburnt fuel that ended up on this, causing it to deteriorate prematurely. Yeah, so these cars, the OEM cats don't like high power, so. What's high power for a Mustang? You know, we're LS guys around the shop. High power for us is, you know, 1,000, 1,200, yeah, something like that. You I don't know. know, probably like 700, 800. 700, 800 horsepower. You start burning through cats, huh? That's what I've heard. Okay. So. Well, you, wait, you've never had a Mustang that high horsepower? No, no, no. Oh, <laughs> so you're just speculating. Well, I, I've just heard, you know, hmm. tuners and stuff. On the internet. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm still confident that we're gonna have a good leak down here and I have to be because we have $19,000 riding on the line for this motor that has already been paid for from one of our longtime customers. But uh, I'm not gonna put it up to chance and have one of those jinxes like Carrington or Fernando help me out. You ready to leak it down? Yes, but I kinda wanna hear your numbers about the leak down. Leak down numbers. Ooh, yeah. leak down predictions. Yeah. Three, two, four, two. Ah. Three, three, four, three. Four, 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 four. Oh. I don't like that face. We really f***ed this up. This doesn't even really matter at this point. It's f***ed. That's what I'm getting at. It's absolutely f***ed. No, 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 no. Why you gotta do that? Oh, Come on, Oh, no. <laughs> Whoa. So all that stuff I said earlier, you know, this is gonna be an easy night. It hasn't been an easy night physically, mentally, or financially now. Belt's tensioned. I think we're gonna be fine. Oh no! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh that was. <laughs> so I guess we're grabbing Pete. Whew. Strong start with like a one. <laughs> A three. That's a strong one. That's a four. You're going to jinx it. Get out of here. Jinx what? The fact that this thing's going to leak down at 3% all the way? Oh my goodness. What did you just hey, do? There's no way this thing's going to fail. It's a Mustang. What, motor, did you, what did you just do, Carrington? Real. Two, three, four. There's no way that this thing's going to pop up a 25. No way. We still got five cylinders. <laughs> now we're, we're screwed. No, no Carrington jinx. Come on. Another four. Another three. Four. He tried his absolute best, but even the Carrington leak down curse wasn't enough to keep this thing from giving us solid numbers. 6% being the worst number, which is absolutely fantastic on any motor that we leak down. Now that this thing has passed all of the tests, it's time to get it sealed up and crated up and get it on its way to Colorado, where it's gonna spend the rest of its days in a beautiful backdraft Cobra. <laughs>
With the motor gone, we're pretty much coming down the home stretch here. The chassis is pretty much finished, and before we dive into the subframe, get the remaining suspension and brake components that we need off of it, I want to take a minute to talk about some of the questions that arise in the comment section for these salvage stories. People often ask about the components that we leave on the car, saying that we're leaving money on the car. And while it looks like there's still some stuff here, you have an entire front end wiring harness, which normally we would take off, except this one has damage here. So something relatively small like this basically kills the value on this entire front wire harness and makes it not worth keeping. Another question that comes up a lot is the glass on these cars. And that really is left on the car, usually for two reasons. Number one, the liability of shipping it is generally just not worth it. There are examples like the Z28 Camaro that we just did that has a lightweight rear glass where we kept that and got lucky that somebody picked it up locally. But as far as a Mustang here, the liability of shipping this is not worth it. And they're also extremely plentiful from a supplier such as any glass company, which is probably going to be where people People look first when they need them. The other thing is the time frame. If you have somebody that has broken glass, they're probably going to want it fixed as soon as possible. So they're going to check with local resources before they look online and entertain having an item ship. At the back end of the car again, something like this rear bumper beam. Even though this is a GT, this part is probably absolutely no different than every single Mustang on the road, which means that there's tons of these out there. So even if it's worth $80, if we have to ship it, that expense comes out housing it in the warehouse at the end of the day we might be able to make like 10 bucks on the part it's just simply not worth keeping now with that said we have a couple other parts here that are much smaller much cheaper as far as shipping expense goes and for that reason we're more likely to keep them on hand something like these illuminated scuff plates here these are probably about 50 bucks they don't take up much space and we keep several of them a lot of mustang trim packages probably come with these but at some point these will sell and they don't really cost us a lot to house or ship same thing with the antenna here this is probably no different than the majority of the mustangs on the road whether gts or not but this is probably call it maybe 40 50 bucks here and it will cost us next to nothing to ship and store which means that we can make sense of keeping this even if we already have a lot of them now this mustang isn't necessarily anything special as far as trim package goes but it is in excellent condition due to the low miles these are the leather seats and these are very very popular popular for hot rodders. They'll remove the headrest. They have a real nice shape to the shoulder area and we see them put into older vehicles pretty often. Another thing completely unrelated to the parts is this cool Whipple sticker in the gas door. I would assume that they supply those with a supercharger kit just to remind you to fill this thing up on the high test stuff. This does have the upgraded entertainment system in this car which is always nice to see on these Mustangs. We have a few hundred dollars here versus like 50 bucks for the base model setups but we'll dive more into that here in just a little bit when we do the price breakdown for right now we are going to go ahead and get this chassis out of the way get it onto the trailer and ready to go to the scrapyard and then we'll go ahead and dive into the suspension and talk about the pieces that we're keeping on that One Ford hauling another to the scrapyard just seems so poetic. At the rear end here, we're pretty much just after the big stuff. We definitely want all the RTR components, but the brake packages do do well, and then the axle and the diffs from these are also valuable and worth keeping. These suspension corners have a little bit of loader damage from being moved around at the auction lot. So we have plenty of them in stock that are in better condition. We're just gonna go ahead and get rid of these. As I get my butt kicked by the axles. Apparently it does take two to tango.
I could have lifted that and thrown it in a dumpster, you know, like no problem, but work smart, not hard. Now, normally I'd be really excited about something like this RTR suspension, but over here on the driver's side, the strut is damaged. Now, there are replacements available on RTR's website, but this is listed as the tactical suspension setup, and it looks like they've made some improvements to it since this car was built, mainly that it's a kind of an adjustable coilover setup now. So for the amount of money to buy the entire suspension, replace the strut, you're probably going to get pretty close to go after that new tactical kit, and that's probably the more practical reason. So because of that we're going to have to price this accordingly get it pretty cheap to make it worth somebody's while to go through and fix it oh that was close As far as the brakes go, these are the Performance Pack Brembos. This is mainly where the value comes in this entire brake setup. But normally these fetch north of 500 bucks, maybe closer to 600 bucks. That is everything that we are going to be keeping from this RTR Mustang. This subframe is going to go in the dumpster just like the last. And then everything that we are keeping is on its way up to the photo department for Fernando to take care of. Speaking of Fernando, he's been catching some heat down in the comments section recently about him standing around with his hands in his pocket. So we're going to give you guys a little bit more of a look at exactly what Fernando does around here. Fernando, you ready to show the viewers what you do around here? Oh, I'm ready right now. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll be back. Está bien difícil, complicado, toda la situación hoy en día. Pero ve, tengo que regresar a hacerlo. Hey Austin, take the part, clean it, like photo, market. That should be all. Miraculously, Fernando did manage to get all of those parts photoed. Alex got them all listed, and it is time for the most interesting part of these salvage stories, which is the price breakdown. I thought the most interesting part was where I like break a clipboard over my leg or something goes horrendously wrong. This is the just the follow-up. That happens on the smoke series, not on this well, one. It's a matter of time. Trust me, it's a matter of time. Now, the parts total on this is a little bit interesting because we already sold the motor. I told you guys that in the beginning. We have a grand total of $12,199 in parts, which sounds like absolutely nothing. 48 parts produce that. The one big dog out of this whole thing, though, is the motor, which already sold for $19,000. And that is the motor, the transmission, complete dropout with the supercharger attached to it. But we did also sell some other parts. The rear bumper, 650 bucks. The airbag, one of the airbag curtains, I don't remember which side, $200. That was on one order. Then we have the side dash piece, which we got $100 for. And the tire inflator for 50 bucks, which kind of shows you that some of these, you know, smaller oddball pieces do indeed sell from this car. So that brings us to the parts total of $32,199.04. Not gonna sugarcoat it, guys. This is not looking impressive so far. I'm late to the party here. I wasn't in on this teardown, but that's, uh, you can't have high hopes for where this is gonna end, at least this far. This one's gonna get thin really, really quickly. We're gonna take a quick second, talk about some of the parts that we have remaining, because I do anticipate that some of these are gonna sell pretty quickly. Like this Ford Performance Catback, $1,000. Fernando, here we go again. Sir. How you doing? I noticed your hand's not in your pocket. I'm with the phone, you know. Oh, he does all day. The, the Ford Performance cap back $1,000 should sell pretty quickly, I would assume. This is a basically complete middle section back on these cars, not just the axle back. Uh, the rear differential I touched on earlier. This is one of the Iron Housing 373s, which are the stronger version since the autos come with the aluminum housing. Yeah, I, I don't know about that exhaust. It did look awesome on the car. It sounded really good too. But from what I know of the Mustang owners that I've associated with in the past, they prefer to go kind of incognito, be as quiet as possible. That way the pedestrians don't hear them coming. So I don't know, it's gonna take a real special Mustang owner to wanna put that loud warning of an exhaust on their car. 
It certainly was not quiet and it would certainly draw attention one way or another, whether it's from the pedestrians or from the 5.0. The sink head unit is always a good, quick money maker for us. $800 is what the entire setup goes for. And I will note that almost every buyer that is a core buyer, they'll buy them, package them with a, some type of kit that makes it a direct plug and play in other Mustangs, and then sell it for a good bit more money. So it works out for all parties involved there. These Brembo's I touched on earlier also, they are a pretty quick, easy sell. They're a very popular upgrade for a lot of the different Mustang packages that don't come with the performance pack package. Quick, $700. And now if you're not a Ford fanboy, go down in the comments and make fun of Ford for not putting Brembo's on the rear too. You can see where I'm going with this, right? Like I'm a Corvette guy, I can't say anything nice here, even if it was a nice car. The Whipple was pretty cool. Before we get to the rest of the numbers, I do want to talk about some of the RTR pieces that were on this car. Here you have the sway bar setup, and these things are a big, beefy sway bar setup. Front and rear, $500 for the pair. The tactical. That is the name, which I, I knew at some point someone was going to make the, fun the, of it. The tactical it, sway bars? Yes, the tactical sway bar. It is an interesting choice in words. I, I guess the Mustang crowd gets sold on that, but I, I thought it was a funny name for it also. What we ended up doing for the remainder of the suspension, because we had that one damage piece that I touched on, we have the rear struts as a pair, which is $300 for that pair. That's part of the tactical package as well, I see. Okay. These are the tactical struts as well, yes. Can you enlighten me what all the tactical package includes? Is it just struts, springs, and sway bars? or? Well, so the newer tactical package actually looks like it's a coilover setup, which is something that I told the viewers earlier, where I think that there might be a little bit of trouble selling some of these, even though they came off a 2018 Mustang. They're not very old, but it looks like RTR has made some... Uh, adjustments to the aftermarket pieces that they have available on their website. Here we have the springs, which I imagine these will sell pretty quickly. I think that this is probably just an easy uh, bolt onto a stock strut. You don't necessarily need the tactical struts in order to run these, I would assume. So I bet that these sell pretty quickly, but the struts, because it's not a complete set, I think might be an interesting sell for us. It might take a while, but I have to think they will. Somebody's gonna bash a Mustang into a curb that also has a tactical suspension and need a tactical replacement. If we were gonna fix this car, which I'm assuming a lot of you guys have already yelled at us in the comments okay. about not doing, we would have only needed one suspension corner. So having these individual pieces or just the rears as a pair is beneficial for somebody that is going to fix a car that is damaged in a similar way to what we had. Here is that single strut. This is the passenger front because the driver was the bad one. 150 bucks for the strut. So again, somebody that needs a replacement, there you go. If you bought one of these cars and want to fix it and you don't want to have to just replace the entire suspension, you could buy a single one like this. It's generally, I'd say, the more tactical way to go. <laughs> you had to, had to throw that in. From here down, it, it starts getting really, really thin, really, really quickly. And because Mustangs are a car that we do a lot of, we have serious volume in them, we don't keep a lot of parts from them. Basically, it gets thin really, really quickly. We're not gonna talk about anything else. We're gonna get into these numbers and see ultimately where this thing ends up. Purchase price for the car itself, all in with auction fees, $20,373. Now, one thing that I do want to touch on is they always show the estimated retail value if it wasn't wrecked, and they always show the repair cost. This car, the repair cost is listed at $35,500, which to me seems insane. I don't see the numbers there. I think that we probably could have fixed this car five for grand. parts for five grand. That's the five. number I had to. And that sounds like you're gonna yell at us again for why didn't you fix it and it, it really just it would have been a little bit of a tough fix on the labor side depending on how far the frame damage went but from a part side we have all the parts needed here to fix that you know what i'm thinking we should probably should fix this thing that, that might have been a good idea we, we probably would have made more money as well they might be right on this one well it's too late now it is why we could probably put it back together we just got to get the motor back here uh, the chassis is probably already Scrap. It's got a 3000 GT sitting on top of it on the yeah. trailer right now. Yeah, well, never mind. Maybe the next time. So, this car was right in New Jersey, so shipping was absolutely dirt cheap at $200. The selling cost, we always do a flat 10%, and I did do the total 
parts total, which would be $3,219. Luckily, these Mustangs are extremely easy teardowns, at least on the labor side of this. We have $750 bucks for labor. The actual teardown itself is extremely, extremely easy. And the amount of parts that we have remaining, there's nothing difficult to ship. We already took care of the one complicated one that we had to build a crate for. And aside from that, everything else is just normal ground shipping. Maybe one or two small freight items in there, but nothing big at all. Speaking of parts shipping, that is the next thing to come off. I have $2,500 on here. $1,000 of that is the motor shipment. Again, we had to build a crate for it, we had to insure it, and we had to send it most of the way across the country, which brought that shipment to a pretty hefty, I think almost $800 in freight cost. So we're gonna say $1,000 for that just as a ballpark, $1,500 for everything else that is gonna go out the door. Last up, Carrington's absolute favorite dead inventory. Again, I went with a standard 10%, which brings another $3,219 off. And I'm gonna let Carrington do the honors of the measly amount that that leaves us with. Is that right? That, I believe so, unless I hit a number wrong. I think that's oh, right. Well, $1,938. There's another car that comes to mind that you're gonna see in just a moment that had a less than $2,000 theoretical net margin and that was a Pontiac GTO and I think you guys know what we think about those cars. Yeah, give it to me here, delete. <laughs> yeah, that's not great. At least this car, which we made $1,300 on, only cost us five grand. This one cost us 20. The numbers just, aren't working, the proportions aren't working. Not our best deal there. I think you need to go back to that approach we talked to a couple videos ago, find an import, because that's not cutting. The Mustangs aren't doing anything, unless of course it's a bullet that uh, you know I tore down and purchased, and you know what I'm, you know the whole deal here, you know. That's, I made money on a Mustang, and. Well, what Carrington is alluding to is this bullet that is on the leaderboard, but what he's failing to mention is that he bought this car also. The one that just went straight into the loser's bracket. That is true. I did buy it. So, yeah. And I think the only fair thing here to do for me is just to buy another Mustang. Or, I mean, I guess I can just tell you guys at this point. I have purchased another Mustang already that I will be fixing. Clearly, this didn't work out. So, I have no choice but to fix it now. And it is not going to be a fun one to fix. You may or may not have seen a little clip of that earlier in the video. So a Mustang rebuild series will be going on at some point in the relatively near future. But I want to hear your comments specifically about if we should have rebuilt this RTR Mustang. I've alluded to it several times in this video. I'm pretty sure the comment section is going to be just blowing up, lighting us up, especially seeing the numbers that this thing produced, which is far from what we like to buy. So for once, I think that you guys might be right that this one should have been a fixer. But I'm going to play devil's advocate real quick because like Carrington and I said, looking at not a lot of money in parts, I'm going to say about five grand. Call it, I think, on the high side, if you had somebody fix it, maybe five grand in labor. So say you're into this car for another 10 grand on top of the purchase price. That puts you just over $30,000. To me, I feel like that car with a salvage title would be worth 35 grand, not much more of a difference from what we just showed you guys from the parts value. The only thing I can gain from all this, fixing it wouldn't have made us that much money, parting it out made us absolutely no money. Really, somebody overpaid for this car horrendously and they should be reprimanded seriously. Overpaid indeed, but that is the whole point of these salvage stories is to show you all one way or another what goes into this business. Win, lose, or draw, whether we're fixing it, whether we're parting it out, or somewhere in between. We've had a couple losers lately on the salvage stories. This one is uh, particularly bad. So we need to find something that can really bring us back to our winning form that we had earlier this year where we had a couple top dogs in both of the respective categories. But one way or another, I hope everyone is enjoying the content. If you are, do the normal YouTube stuff, hit the like button, leave us some comments, and definitely subscribe so you can keep up on all the fun stuff that we have coming down the pipeline. Thank you for the support as always. We'll see you in the next video.
Fernando, are you sleeping? What the f***?